Alrighty, so today we're back with another news of the week episode, and I'm back in the right time frame of these news of the week episode because, as I mentioned, I've always wanted to do the news of the week episode on a Wednesday and a Saturday, but lately it's been just kind of all over the place with me doing it on a Monday, Tuesday, and so forth, and so forth. But uh, there was definitely some big news that came out of MLS. But the first thing I want to talk about is the Super Draft, and I'm not going to talk about exactly the detail of the Super Draft, but just a reminder that it is going to be tonight, and that, you know, I know the Super Draft, for me, I have always said before that it's kind of have lost its luster, and that it's become more irrelevant as the day goes along, but I also feel like the Super Draft is kind of something that, you know, it, there's still some charm in the Super Draft, where you can definitely still find some hidden gems in the Super Draft that you can develop a player in a way that he can be... Be, be very good and you can eventually sell him off for asset i mean we've seen this before with a couple of these super draft picks in the previous year where they where they get a chance with their mls team and they they have a chance to eventually sold off for for big profit and and, and moved to europe but yeah you know it's going to be interesting to see who's going to be the number one pick and that's going to be something i'll mention in the next news of the week episode and also maybe even mention some some uh, key players in this super draft that could potentially break out and could be like like the like some of these players that have been able to to come out of the super draft play well for their team and eventually make a move to europe now uh moving on in terms of the next news and this is kind of a breaking news because uh, this literally just announced an hour ago and that is Hern Lasada has named as the new head coach of CF Montreal. Now, this completely came out of left field. I mean, we, you know, usually when we, we talk about uh, head coaching search, there's some rumors, the fact that maybe he's going to be, be the next head coach for a team. This was not the case. I mean, this literally, like, like literally an hour ago, I got a notification that Hern Lasada become the new head coach of CF Montreal. And uh, yeah, I was kind of a little bit su surprised that, that it was announced that, Announced this quickly, and that you know, for a while we've been talking about her and Lasada after uh, his, his, his failed kind kind of coaching tenure with DC United. Is he going to get another chance in MLS, or is he going to go 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 back to your Europe uh, in this case? And it seems like he's staying in in MLS and becoming the new head coach of CF Montreal. And I know there are going to be some people that that think that this is not going to be a great move because you know one of the things that her and Lasada has been heavily criticized during his time with DC United is the way that he's treat his player and his intense kind of training session and then even the 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 whole whole narrative about about he's kind of like like the 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 new Gabriel Heinze with with you're not allowed to drink drink water during training and also have a very strict strict diet but I still think that there are some par parts of her in Lasada the reason why he, he was let go of DC was just simply uh he just kind 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 of clash with the front office and anytime when you're a head coach and you have some disagreement with the front office yeah, it's not going to go go well. You're not going to, to sustain a job. So I think that was kind of more, more plays into the part why eventually DC decided to, to let him, him go. And that, yeah, we'll see whether or not if this is going to be different. I mean, again, this is kind of a weird fit because, you know, Hern Lasada, he's a guy that demand the front office to, to give the resources for him to sign players. And while CF Montreal has definitely sold a lot of players this offseason and have got a lot of profit... You know, there's that big question of whether or not they're going to reinvest in that profit. And most people, but especially Montreal fans, are going to say no. Because Joey Saputo is always known to be one of the cheaper owners in the league. And tends to not, not want to reinvest of, of the the team, even if they, of course, earn a profit. So, I don't think this is going to gonna work out with her and Lasada going to another team that, that is going to be... Be, um, have have owners and front office are not willing to, to kind of open the 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 pocketbook in terms of signing players, but we'll see whether or not if this this of course would work out. And you know, again, I know a lot of people are saying Montreal could be heading in into a huge step back uh, because of the way that pretty much they 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 got completely fleeced with their their ta talent in a good way with the way that they of course earn earn a lot of money out of those those sales, but the big question about this season is that well once you sell all of your your good players now what the heck is go going to happen is this team going to suffer a major decline because of it now uh moving on in terms of the next news so we have a a couple of big signings start off with fc cincinnati signing ecuadorian midfielder marco angulo now this has been a r rumor that's been happening for the past 
month or two and then it feels like it is now official that Cincinnati have signed him and I think this is a good good signing he's a very good box-to-box midfielder and he even a guy that actually ends up on the injured reserve team of the Ecuadorian national team uh in the World Cup and yeah you know I think this is going to be be a, a decent signing and just continue to solidify this this midfield that Cincinnati you know for a couple of years that they were kind of a, a joke in the league and the fact that they just have no midfield and no defense and no attacking yeah it's safe to say that they not only now ha- have a a, a midfield but on the attack they have some dangerous weapon and then at the back they also had some decent too and Cincinnati is started to become a team that yeah they're not not the joke the the butts of jokes anymore with with them reinforce the team and that last year was just the beginning of this team started to have their fortune turn around uh with the way that they're going to be a competitive team in the Eastern Conference now uh speaking of Montreal uh Montreal also acquired Aaron Herrera from RSL in exchange for 500,000 general allocation money and a 2023 20, first round pick. So, you know, as much as I said that Montreal hasn't really kind of reinvested the team, they kind of did some. I mean, I think Aaron Herrera uh, going to Montreal, that's kind of a bit of a surprise because, you know, he I thought he was going to be stay with RSL and eventually at a, at a rate where he, he's going to develop his career to a way that where he can get a chance of, of potentially moving on to Europe. But now he's going to be going... To Montreal, it's going to be a new, new, new scenery for for him because he's been part of the RSL uh, team for a very long time, even ever since uh, him in the academy level. And that, yeah, you know, you know, I think he, he's he's a dec- decent decent defender in this league. And that, you know, for Montreal, knowing the fact that they want to replace some 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 of the the pieces that they lost. I mean, one thing that I think Montreal definitely need to address is that defense. I mean, last season that defense at times were very 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 suspect but uh getting Aaron Herrera is definitely going to be be an a, a great addition in terms of that now uh Austin FC have agreed to sign Dutch winger uh Cheke Torre now I think this is more of a debt signing rather than just a major signing because I've have, I've already heard that it seems like he's going to be most likely be be one of the first player to be be introduced to their new reserve team Austin FC C2 and yeah you know I think being o- overall, you know, I don't know a lot about, about this kid, but it seems like if this is just going to be a deaf signing, most likely this is going to be a kid that had some potential, but he's going to be, be playing in the second team first and see how he does. And if he does well, then he could be promoted to the main, main team. Now, uh, the LA Galaxy, they have re-signed both of their goalkeeper to a contract and bo- both Jonathan to a, a contract. I think the Galaxy is the on- only uh, team in MLS that actually have the the their both of their their goalkeeper their starting and backup co- goalkeeper by the same name uh they of course re-signed backup goalkeeper jonathan kinsman to a new contract and they also re-signed their main goalkeeper jonathan bond to a new contract i mean there's really not much to complain about i mean that uh, i think this is definitely a good tantrum where jonathan bond one of the best goalkeepers in in this league and jonathan kinsman can de- definitely step step in uh, and and be a decent kind of backup goalkeeper. So yeah, I think this is this is kind of something that you knew it was going to to ha- happen uh, with the Galaxy. Now uh, moving on in terms of the next news, there is a report suggests that Nashville SC could send their one of their DP four Ake Loba back to Liga MX and to Mazatlan FC. Now obviously, if you're a Nashville fan, you're hoping that this is going to be be the case because let's be honest, Ake Loba has been a huge disappointment, and I would say. This is going to be be going down as one of the biggest bu- busts in terms of a player coming to MOS and signing a designated player contract, and and it's a shame too because when he came to Nashville, you know there was talks about the fact that he did very well with Riados and that you know, Nashville might have found, found a hidden j- jam of a player that 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 can they can develop and eventually sell them off for a profit, and it turns out that was anything thing from from reality because yeah he turns out to be a guy that couldn't even get on on the starting 11 and even rumors saying that he, he just ca- kind of lacked that 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 kind of kind of work rate and lacked that that kind of desire to try to get into the starting 11 and even times when you see him play with Nashville uh he you could clearly see see that he is a player that just just kind of sometimes be lazy in ter- terms of how 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 he uh he, he the, the way that he plays and that it just getting to a point where I think Nashville just simply need to cut their lo- losses. I mean, they know know that he, he is definitely not going to be in the answer. I mean, they they've already have two seasons in terms of trying to develop him to be a good player, and it has just failed spe- 
spectacular to a rate where I won't be surprised this is going to be, be the case and that, you know, yes, they're going to probably lose some money out, out of this because they definitely paid a hefty amount of fee to get Ake Lobo from Riados, but it, it's better this way with the way that they can open a DP spot and that when you, uh, as I said many times before, when you have one of your designated player uh, regularly be on, on the, the bench and aren't able to get into the starting 11, yeah, you know something has gone, gone terribly wrong and that, that yeah, for Nashville, I, I think this will will definitely be, be the case that they are going to cut their losses and send Ake Lova back to Liga MX. Now, uh, the Houston Dynamo is in the talk to acquire Paraguayan international Ivan Franco from Libertad. Now, uh, this is a guy that I haven't heard a, a lot about, but some people say that he's not, I mean, he's still young, but he's a player that, that I don't know if it's going to cha change the fortune of this Dynamo team. And not to mention, I think he's also in number 9, which is kind of odd because they already have Seba Ferreira in that number 9 spot. So why do they need to think about start signing another number 9 unless uh, whoever their, their new head coach is going to be is going to play a two-striker two system. But either way, that's going to be interesting to see how, how this is good gonna go and that you know normally when you look at Paraguay player it's kind of hit hit and miss especially in terms of of the the striker position I mean on on one hand in terms of Paraguayan player we know a certain guy called Miguel Almiron turns out to be a gem and the same goes uh with Kaku until until things kind of went went off the rail for him but then you also have Luis Al Amaria and I'm not saying Amaria is a bad number nine I mean he, when you look look at doing the the time when the loons were were at their peak last season he was was everything that that Minnesota was was hoping to be be that lethal number nine but unfortunately uh it didn't quite quite, quite last and his form kind of dip and that ever since that you know it's been kind of kind of it's been a very interesting thing to see uh whether or not if if the Luis Amaria signing uh back back to Minnesota is actually considered a good one or not and uh, some people might say, well, this might be the, the same situation, but we'll see whether or not not if they are going to sign him, and, and especially the rumors say that they're actually not that close in terms of the talk. They're just beginning uh, negotiation as we speak. And then moving on in terms of the next news, and now moving away from transfer reports and and uh, also signings, uh, Orlando City for Tesha Akindeli has now announced his retirement. And, you know, for Tesha Akindeli, it's been kind of an interesting, in career in MLS, I mean, I remember doing his time with FC Dallas, and that you know there was definitely some that have said that he could have the potential to be a good player, and especially with the way that anytime when you come out of the FC C Dallas Academy, which I don't think Tesha Ekendale was, but he was part of that team that was was definitely in the full on speed of the youth movement. Some people said that he was going to be a decent player, and even some that say that he could be a future Canadian uh, national team number. Number nine. Well, it turns out that, of course, did not quite worked out. Uh, eventually, he did go to Orlando City, where he kind of finds some some success. But I always thought that he was kind of almost an average kind kind of striker uh, in in this league, and that you know, and the fact that his minutes has been drastically decreased with the way that Orlando City have fa found found a better option compared to him. Um, yeah, I, I think 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 he knew that his, his time was going to be over, and that also he is getting to his thirties where. You know, that's kind of the time when you're a player and you don't really have getting a lot of minutes or even any offer from other team that maybe you might think about hanging up of your the, the boots. And that's exactly what is the case for Tesha Akindeli. But I will say this, at least Tesha Akindeli was able to go out, out kind of as a ch champion because, you know, Orlando said he did win the U.S. Open Cup. And even though I don't know if he put, I don't think he played a lot of part in it. At least, at least, you know, that's something that not a lot, a lot of players can can do which is on their final no year of their career they can go out at least with a tr trophy uh in, in 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 their stats line uh but now moving on into the last news and this is something that i mentioned before but it's now creeped up again where there is now reports suggest that mls is now now set to be working on this new playoff format now obviously this is not a big surprise because as we get into to uh now 29 teams in the league and soon to be 30 teams it is pretty obvious that the, the playoff format is going to be changing once again. And whether you like it or, or, or not, you know, it seems like MLS are, are not going to stick with this current format. Which I think this current for, format is one of the, the better ones with the way that the single elimination game has kind of provide some crazy kind of 
kind of games. Although, you know, at least in the last playoffs, that was kind of not the case. I mean, if you it not include the El Trafico and also what whatever happened in that MLS Cup final, it was kind of a bit of an underwhelming kind of playoff. So I think MLS is looking to trying to do a playoffs where they're going to go with a very World Cup style kind of playoffs where, you know, the there's going to be the eight teams from both of the conference that's going to make it and that they're going to be, be going to do a group stage and then eventually uh, the winner of, of the, or the top four of of uh, each of the conference is going to be moving on into that single elimination and then we have the, the traditional playoffs. And uh, I also noticed that MLS is try trying to do these ki kind of things now and that it's been kind of heavy, heavy inspired, not just because of the World Cup, but because of MLS is back. Back. I feel like ever since MLS is back happened, where we kind of had that World Cup style kind of tournament, we have seen MLS have been thinking about trying to recreate that once again. I mean, we already saw in the League Cup where it's kind of like a World Cup style tournament too. But uh, just the the way that it feels like it's going to be the same case in the playoffs too. I mean, again, I can see why there's some people that hate it and some people that that like this format. I mean. Obviously, there's more hate toward because, you know, that basically means that the regular season doesn't really matter. I mean, you can finish as the number one seed in the regular season and win the supporters shoe and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, when you go into the group stage and you don't perform, you're going to be out out of the playoffs. But obviously, the argument of that is the fact that at least it gives team maybe more fair of a chance once they get into the group stage where they can do well. And then all of a sudden, they can get themselves into the single elimination playoffs but i think the other uh factor of why mls has decided to do to, to revamp this playoff format it's for money it's clearly for money reason it means that we have more high high intensity kind of games uh whether happening in the group stage or in the single uh, elimination and like it or not you know that's just kind of the reality now now in 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 this in this world it's all about the money tt uh leagues are going to find a ways to to create Great, interesting thing where they're gonna try trying to of course also keep the the rating because you know the ratings is very very important to to mls as it is the case for other leagues like the nfl nba and mlb but 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 yeah you know that that, that these leagues also have tried ways to maybe create ways where they can not only keep the ratings but also make make some extra money and i think this is going to be be the key thing where you know now there's going to be more more play out game i mean there i i would say that I, I don't know if the league actually does make it some extra money from the from the league cup because i think that's a separate kind of competition but you know mls is try, trying to do ways where you know these playoff games are very very I I intense but unfortunately with the current format with the way that you know because we're going through a single elimination that pretty much ha have mean that the playoffs has been shorter than when we had had the two-legged affair and that the league is trying to find ways to kind of earn back those money and i think this is kind of the way that they're going to do it whether if fans would like 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 the this current format or they hate it because of of what i just said with the way that it means that the regular season is not as as um important as we we've seen in the past but there we have it that is pretty much it in terms of looking at the news that has happened in these past couple of days as always let me know in the comments below what do you think of these news and if there's any news i didn't mention here on the board let me know in the comments as well but yeah hope you guys enjoy this video if you do make sure you guys do a like smash the subscribe button and yeah i of course will see you guys next time